Big time UFC debut coming up this weekend. We have the former Brave welterweight champ and Carlson Harris making his debut, taking on the beast Christian Aguilera. And Matt, really interesting fight in this one because for Carlson Harris, he was one of those guys that was featured on not Dana White's looking for a fight. It was Dana White's looking FWD to a fight. I'm assuming that's forward, but... If you go back and you look at his last win, he picked up the big finish over Segid Izagameyev, who was 17-1. That was on a co-promoted EFC, which was Eagles and UAE Warriors card. And it was taking place on Fight Island in and around the time when Dana White tried to go all LeBron James on ABC and had the decision with Habib Nurmagomedov where... They shut a white door in a boardroom, had a chat, made everybody feel like Khabib was coming back, and then in the end, he wasn't. Carlson Harris gets contract. And if you've ever watched him fight, this guy has a really neat style where he's looking to take you down, he's looking to grind you out, and he does have plenty of finish wins. You look at it, I mean, 15 total, 8 of them by finish, 4 by knockout, 4 by submission, but very much a grinder. He'll go in there, he'll try and snatch a leg, work for a single, work for a double, even bring you up against the cage just to try and knock down your base, wear you out and finish you and if he doesn't then more than likely he's going to win by decision i mean again 15 and 4 the total record he's 33 years old nearly 34 and you don't see a lot of fighters getting their debut especially at welterweight being that far up and i say far up but being that far up in age especially being a prospect like that so maybe an unlikely signing to the ufc he's going to be taking on christian aguilera and if this guy had a nickname that wasn't the beast, it would be like that terrible movie that I never saw, Never Back Down. I mean, if you watch a Christian Aguilera fight, the guy's all or nothing. He goes in there absolutely swinging for the fences. He has decent defensive jiu-jitsu. As far as his wrestling, might not be there. I did see a couple of interviews out there. He had one with Sports Kita and our friend JHK, and I'll reference that a little bit later on. But I'll let you take over because, again... Little bit of a clash of styles coming up here. This should be a really interesting fight. For Aguilera, here's the thing. He... He's going to show a better version of himself than he did in his last fight. Because listen, most guys at 170 are going to get wrestled and just kind of controlled by Sean Brady. We know how good of not only a grappler he is, but just how good of an all-around MMA fighter he was. He was able to prove that really well in his last fight against Jake Matthews. So for Aguilera, I do think he'll be able to showcase a lot more of his skill set in this fight. But it is unfortunate. And I'm just going to expand a little bit upon what you had sort of mentioned. Carlson Harris is kind of in that Harney Barcelos area where it's like, damn, I really wish this guy was like five years younger. Because it really is unfortunate that a guy at one 170 is only getting his first opportunity at the age of 33 almost 34 because at 170 it's not like age is going to catch up to you like maybe a dominant cruise at bantamweight you can age a little bit more gracefully i mean look cowboy cerrone's in the co-main event but for harris it would have been nice if you could see him in the ufc a little bit earlier so that he could be able to do his run maybe a little bit earlier but stylistically i think this is a really tough fight for christian aguilera because for harris he can do a lot of those things that aguilera just struggles with now one thing i do like about aguilera is he does something that it, it just it it stood out to me did not back or read to this in his last fight where he switched stances as he was moving backwards and was able to throw with power it's actually something that Aguilar is pretty good at doing he can't do it to the same degree it's not like he's that accurate with his strikes but he isn't bad at striking moving backwards for a guy who yes like you had mentioned he is the beast he is that brawler but he's a lot more technical on the feet than I think a lot of people give him credit for yes he does try to go in there and wing when he gets somebody hurt but if he is just striking forward and backwards kind of that mirror movement striking on the inside he's not a bad fighter to just pick up points and he might be able to win rounds that way but for Carlson Harris, if he is able to get in there, get on the hips of Aguilera, and again, people hate it when I say this, and I hate saying it, making it a boring fight and trying to at least extinguish some of those flames that Aguilera comes in with, I do think Carlson can get his UFC career off to the right track. If you look at Carlson Harris's five on in, and we talk about it, especially with the graphics, you look at it, I mean, Segid Izagagmeyev, he gets the win there, who's 17-1, Alex Santos, 9-7-1, Claudio Rocha, at 12 and 11 that was kind of like a bounce back win because before that he was the brave champ at 170 picked up a big win over carl booth a name that people might recognize out of europe and then he lost to Jeral hussein al salawi and that's a guy that we've been talking about a fair bit with fight night picks i want to say because he's kind of like the brave cf guy that you need to know it's either Jara hussein al salawi or abdul Abdurgimov. We talked about him in an episode of Keeping Score, which is on our Instagram, at Fight Night Picks. But those are kind of the two guys at 170 over with Brave. For Carlson Harris, though, again, came up, had a fight with Immortal, had a fight or some fights with Brave, with Shuto. And then he has that one fight on a big UAE Warriors card in front of the brass. Dana White, Dean Thomas, a guy who poor Habib thought was who? 
Who do you think he was? Eve Edwards? He didn't know who he was. Yeah, it was really weird. And that was a weird thing to punctuate, but they also punctuated the whole Josh Fabia thing. And look how that turned out. But we get this fight. Again, it is interesting. Possible clash of styles. If you look at the odds for this one, Christian Aguilera open a minus 140 favorite. He's now plus 123 or thereabouts on best fight odds for the man himself, Carlson Harris, representing Guyana. Uh, he opened a plus 120. He's now a minus 150. And if we have a look at the topology votes, because it's fun, we haven't seen these yet. 878 total votes, 74% Harris, 54% by submission for the 26% that have Aguilera, 51% by decision, 37% by knockout. So again, the fans are also thinking Clash of Styles, and maybe there's a possibility because we did see Sean Brady do it to Aguilera the last time. Maybe Harris is going to do the same thing, take him down, rinse and repeat, and just try and waste that gas tank of Christian Aguilera. I'm kind of surprised so many fans, though, are siding with Carlson Harris because I had said before we had started, I wouldn't be surprised if Aguilera can win this fight. I just don't think we saw the best version of him in his last fight. Like, if Sean Brady fought most people in earlier on in their career, they're going to get beat by him. And he, honestly, he's a guy who probably belongs in the top 15, should be fighting the likes of the Neil Magnus and Jeff Neal, kind of towards the top of this card. So, for Aguilera, I do think there's a really good chance that he can showcase a lot more of his skill set. And I do think if he can force this fight to be on the feet, he'll have success. But my issue with Aguilera, it's not that I hate his takedown defense. I hate his inability to create space after someone gets in on his hips. If Carlson gets in on his hips, I do think he can just keep this fight in the clinch up against the cage. And even if he's not able to secure the takedowns, at least keep it in a dominant enough position so that Harris will be the one winning the rounds as this fight goes on. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if Aguilera catches him with a big shot and is maybe able to take advantage of it. But I'm going to side with Harris at the end of the day. For Harris, you're coming into this one. This fight was even rumored back in February. It's February 25th. MMA Junkie threw it out there. Friend of the show, uh, Nolan King with Farah Hanoon on that one. But if you look at it, Aguilar was supposed to take on Warley Alves back in January. And he had to pull out. He cited, uh, what was it, a back injury. He couldn't train full bore for about four weeks. So yeah, he's had time to get ready for this one. But again, you just kind of worry about it. And if Aguilera is going to lose, yeah, I mean, he does have the knockout losses on his record. But at the same time, Harris is very, very adept on the ground. He's very positionally aware. I do have Guyana's own Carlson Harris to get the win. I'm really looking forward to the fight. I agree with you on a lot of those points as well. But both of us going with Harris to get the win in this fight to kick off the card. We have a great one coming up. Dude. Donald Cerrone taking on Alex Morono in the co-main event. Marina Rodriguez and Michelle Watterson in the main event. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep locked in with Fight Night Picks. As we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.